All right. Good afternoon, folks. This is our last live stream in the Conservation in Your Own Backyard series. And I'm here to talk to you today about how you can help local conservation efforts in your area. So this is focusing on the Hudson Valley specifically. Um, so if you're a bit outside that, you'd have to look um, a bit elsewhere, or you can look at these websites and then go from there to find other options. So you don't really need to be a scientist to help the environment. There are tons of folks you can work with and things you can do so long as you have time, access, and funding. So the time outside of your workday and your social life and your responsibilities to do the volunteering, access to get there, so either a car, public transportation, um, any kind of disability, disability accommodations that you need, and then finally, funding. I mean, some of this does cost a bit more money, I'll get into that later, and some of the things that I'm going to show you offer to, you know, offer for you to donate. There are definitely things you can donate to. So we'll be exploring three main avenues here. Volunteering your time, helping your local pollinators, and a way to reduce your environmental impact. So first, volunteering your time. I've put together, there are four local organizations here that I'm going to talk about that work to help the Hudson Valley and can always use more help. I have the websites on the slides, but if you'd like me to send you specific websites after, just put that in the comments and I'll give that to you. Also, be sure to check out their websites to see what they need and when. Things have changed a bit in the past year or so as to what people do. Some things have been put on pause. Um, so just double check that. The thing that this category has in common is that you need free time to do it and transportation across the area. Some of these things involve going to multiple places or going to one place you know, multiple times a month. So first, we have the Huston, Hudson Estuary Trees for Tribs. This is a project run by the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation, and it works to replace trees, shrubs, and grasses that normally grow around streams. Now, we've lost some of this due to, you know, urbanization and just the buildup of houses and businesses, but those plants help to prevent erosion and pollution, and they're super important for the, the ecosystem around that. This is specifically targeted for the Hudson River Estuary Watershed, and that does cover most of Dutchess County. The very Eastmost bit of it is not covered, but it is most of Dutchess County. And they always need help planting trees. So head to www.dec.ny.gov forward slash lands forward slash 43668.html. Next, we have the Poughkeepsie Farm Project, which is super cool, I have to say. The Poughkeepsie Farm Project is all about sustainable food and farming. So they have a CSA program, which is community supported agriculture. You purchase a share of the farm and then you can get fresh food from that. So that does cost a bit of money, but they also accept, accept SNAP for that. So it makes it a lot more accessible to a wider amount of people, which is important because healthy food is something that can be hard to afford and that's super important to eat. 
They also do a lot of educational programs about where food comes from and how to eat healthier. Knowing exactly what you're eating, where it comes from, and how that works is really important to knowing how to eat a healthier diet that works for you. Also, kind of going off that, they also advocate for access to quality food for people of all income levels. And they also do a lot of donations to local soup kitchens. So to learn more and to see how you can help them, go to www.farmproject.org. Next, we have Scenic Hudson, which is huge. According to their About Us page, they're the largest environmental organization in the Hudson Valley, and I can definitely believe that. They do a lot. Conservation of our local farms and tidal wetlands, advocacy to safeguard our natural resources, and tackle climate change, which has been increasingly important since a lot of us live next to a very big river. They also educate folks about the land around us, and they work to restore riverfront communities. There are multiple service projects that you can participate in. So for more info, go to www.scenichudson.org forward slash get dash involved forward slash volunteer. Next, we have Riverkeeper, which, as the name suggests, is, a, is an organization all about the Hudson River, which is, you know, fair because the Hudson River is very big. This organization focuses on the restoration and protection of the Hudson River ecosystem, as well as protecting the New York City drinking water and providing and improving access to the river itself. There are multiple facets here, as you can see, which means there's a lot of volunteering opportunities. And libraries have worked with them in the past. They're really great partners. So for more info, go to www.riverkeeper.org forward slash get dash involved forward slash volunteer. There we go. So next, if you want to do something closer to home, you can go to your garden and help your local pollinators. This doesn't require as much access, but it does require time and some money since you are spending it on your garden. However, we're not just talking about the bees. And that is a super worthwhile thing to do, to focus on helping bees and supporting them and making sure that they won't die out. But there are other pollinators out there that aren't as cute and fuzzy, but also need our help, like beetles and wasps. So here are four steps from the Xerxes Society for Invertebrate Conservation that you can take to help your local pollinators. So grow pollinator friendly gardens and as i said before this means you have to be friendly to all pollinators not just the cute ones to do this you plant your garden such that there are pollinator friendly plants nearly all year long from spring to fall so they the different plants overlap there are a lot of ways to do this and there's lots of guides online especially if you contact your local Cornell Cooperative. You can also put out little dishes of water with some rocks on the bottom so that the, there's like a portion of the rocks above the water. This is a great way to make sure your pollinators, especially bees, have something to drink in the summer. The, the bees and the wasps come down and they like sit on the little rocks and they drink from the water. It's very cute, but it's also super important, especially given how hot our summers are getting. Next, we're going to be talking about, oh, there we go, providing nesting sites. So not all bees live in hives. A great amount of them actually 
live in the ground, underground. And that's, you know, totally not to say, you know, beetles don't live in hives. Some wasps, wasps do, but not everyone. So advocating for green space is really important because this is where bees and other pollinators eat and live and have babies. And advocating to keep more green space in your community is one of the best ways to help. When green space like this is developed, the pollinators tend to lose their space to eat and make homes. Another one, another way to help, especially for bees, is to build little bee condos, which are basically a bundle of tubes that you can hang in a tree or next to the ground. You can get kits for this online, but you can just as easily go to the hardware store and get a bunch of like tiny PVC pipes. Next, we have a bit obvious. Stop using pesticides. This harms way more than it helps, and it harms way more than just the pollinators. But it is especially bad for them because it can harm not only them, so physically, but it can also harm their food sources and the nesting places that they need. In addition to all of that, this is a stressor and when bugs like this get stressed, it increases the likelihood of sickness, which can spread easily and have wider effects than expected. Last on the list is spread the word. Once you have that garden going, let your friends know, show them. And for more info about bringing back your local pollinators, head to Xerxes, so X-E-R-C-E-S dot org forward slash bring dash back dash the dash pollinators. They're a great source for information about how you can help and ways you can plan your garden to be friendly. And finally, we're going to be talking about how to reduce your environmental impact. Now, this is often one of the hardest things to do as this requires time, money, and access. Trying to live a more sustainable life is really hard, especially in this economy. And there are many ways you can approach it. So I'm gonna give you one suggestion, so one way to do that, and that's reducing your consumption of fast fashion. So what fast fashion is, it's clothing created using super fast and super cheap processes with styles that change rapidly. So you end up getting hastily made garments that don't last very long, made of plastic, because that's what polyester is, that go out of style in a few months, and then consumers are prompted to purchase more. So here are some ways you can work with that. Aim on getting quality over quantity. So buy a little less, but invest more in the clothes that you do get. Next, try and support sustainable brands. These brands don't take the same kind of shortcuts. They use sustainable material, su sustainable practices, and they pay their workers actual wages. Now, this can be super hard for people. This is really hard for me, sustainable brands usually don't have the range of sizes that I need. But it's worth to look into. Next, if you don't need to toss it, repair it. Learn to sew. It's not super hard. There are tons of ways you can learn. Your local library might be having something that you can use to help with in the future. Stay tuned for that. And if you can't repair it, reuse it. For example, t-shirts make really good rags. And you can also always cut something down or take it out. You don't need to do anything fancy, but making sure that the clothes that you do have last as long as possible ensures that you're not just throwing something away, something away needlessly. And finally, instead of throwing things away, especially if they're not, you know, gross or 
full of holes or you know irreparably ripped you can donate it there are tons of places in the Hudson Valley where you can do this for example the children's home of Poughkeepsie Duchess Outreach so Duchess Outreach is more for everyone they're a very wide organization um, Dress for Success Duchess County is for women and mostly tailors to working clothes so getting clothes so you can go to an interview and then finally the grace smith house incorporated is for domestic violence survivors so they take all sorts of donations now this is a lot and i'll leave this slide up for a second if you want to specifically look at these links but you can always ask me if you want specific ones afterwards. Finally, though, you do not need to do everything. This is a, this is a super stressful time and you don't need to do, well, frankly, you don't need to do any of this. If you want to do some of this, I'd recommend choosing one or two things. You can't pour out of an empty cup. You have to take care of yourself first. But you have these options. All right. So my citations and any further links are available upon request. So just comment below if you'd like that and I can get them to you. And that is it. Have a great day, guys.